Now we're going to look at how we can implement hashing within our applications. First, though, I just want to go through quickly how hashing works um, in Python using Hashlib. So I'm going to start up a Python shell to demonstrate, and I'm going to import the Hashlib module. Hashlib contains a bunch of hash functions that have different algorithms and have different characteristics that we can use. And we're going to use the SHA-256. So all of these functions, well, most of these are functions. All of these are available within the Hashlib module, which is part of your Python distribution. So first, let's make a variable that contains a string that could be a password. OK, and then I want to hash this using SHA-256. And this function call is actually going to give me an error. I just want to show it to you and talk about it for a second. The error here is that SHA-256 and these other hash functions expect us to give them um, a, a set of bytes rather than a string. So I need to take that string and turn it into a set of bytes before giving it to SHA-256. So I can do that pretty relatively easily by saying stir.encode. And that will encode that string as a set of bytes. And I can pass that to SHA-256. And what I get out of that is a hash object. Okay, And so we're not going to store a hash object in the database. We want to hash string. So um, the way I can get the, the, the data out of that hash object is to say dot hex digest. OK, and so there you see that simple password turned into a long and not so simple and pretty unintelligible uh, hash value. So that's kind of the process we're going to go within our code to hash these uh, passwords from users. And I'm going to work on my hashing uh, code in a separate file. So I'm going to come to my project here, and make a new Python file. I'm going to call this hashutils.py. OK, and in hashutils, as we did in the Python shell, I want to import hashlib. OK, and there are two functions I want to write in this file right now. One is going to be called make pwhash. And that's going to take a password. We'll come back to that in a second. I just want to stub these out. The other one is going to be uh, check pwhash. And that's going to take a password and a hash. So the first one will be used to take a password and turn that into a hash for storing that in the database on the user's account rather than storing their password in plain text. And the second one will be used for uh, verifying the user's password when they come to log in. So when they come to log in, we'll take that hash value out of the database and the password that they gave us, and then compare those using the approach that we talked about in the introduction lesson. Let's do the first one, the make pw hash. This one's going to be the easiest at this point. So here, I just want to use the hashutils sha256 function to turn that string into a uh, into to a hash. So we can say return hashlib dot sha256, and then as we did before, I need to encode this password as bytes, and at the end, I can say hex digest. OK, so uh, when I do this, this is going to return a string that represents the hashed password uh, as a result of running it through the SHA-256 algorithm. And we'll store that in the database rather than the user's actual password. When a user comes to log in, we're going to verify their password by uh, checking the password they gave us against the hash. And so what I can do here is I can say um, if. make pw hash from the password if that equals the hash that they gave that we have from the database we can return true else return false okay so what we're going to do here is we are going to take the password that they gave us this is going to be a, just a plain text string that the users typed in in an attempt to log in and we're going to hash that. And if that matches, if that hashed password matches the hash that we have in the database, we're going to return true. Otherwise, we'll return false. Um, and so 
this uses the fact that um, collisions of of hashes with a good hash function are extremely rare um, and generally almost impossible to find or construct. So um, if that wasn't the case, this would not work. So let's go back and use this in our application now. There are two places where I want to use this. First, though, I'm going to need to import this stuff. So let me come in and say from hash utils, import, uh, make pw hash, and check pw hash. Okay. And I'm going to need to change some code in two places. One, make pw hash is going to need to be dropped in when I'm first creating a user account. And then check pw hash is going to need to be dropped in when I uh, validate that a user has the correct password when they're trying to log in. OK, so when I'm creating a user, I'm going to be calling the user's initializer and passing in an email and a password. So rather than storing the password on the user object, I want to store the hash. And so here, I'm actually going to change the name of this property to pwhash to be more descriptive. And then when I initialize the object, I'm going to hash the password. OK, so now I'll be storing the password hash on the database. And we'll have to update our database to get this to work. And uh, let's go down to the login code. All right, so down here in the login code, we just previously were just checking the plain text passwords against each other. So here, rather than uh, saying user.password double equals password, we want to say check pw hash. And let's see, I forgot which order these were in. Uh, password first and then the hash. So the password is what was passed in from the user submitting the form. And then the user object has a PW hash on it. So I can pass that in right there. And that should be all we need to do. So let's go ahead and try to run our application and, um, and see if this works. First, I need to start up my database, though. All right, and then I need to, uh, I'm actually going to start a Python shell first so I can update my database tables. So we're going to drop all, and then we'll create all. OK, and we see in our create table uh, statement for the user table, we have our new PW hash column right there. OK, so that's great. So we can go ahead and exit out of this and start our application. OK, let me go ahead and log out. And then let's see, I need to. Uh, I'm not going to have any users in the database, so let me go ahead and register a new user. OK, and that login seems to have worked. Uh, it's hard to tell exactly if, if anything changed or what changed, so let's go look at the database. So if I come to my Get It Done database um, and look at my user table, and I see that now, in place of that plain text password, I now have a password hash. OK, so that's being stored. Um, so let's go ahead. We just tested the user registration code. Let's test the user login code to make sure that, that uh, those updates worked as well. And indeed, there we go. So uh, verification of that password using the make pw hash and check pw hash functions um, worked just as we wanted it to. And now we're actually storing our user passwords in a, in a secure way that um, is less vulnerable to hacking. So um, we're not totally done yet. There's one vulnerability that hashing is still exposed to that we can uh, fix relatively easily. And we're going to address that in the next lesson.